Hello all, finally we meet again on this channel. Sorry for not posting for a long time. This time I will bring you a manhwa that caught my attention. But before that, I want to tell you that this manhwa is already released. You can watch it now. I wrote the link in the comments section. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. The story begins with a young man running 10 kilometers in the rain during his morning jog. He follows it up with 500 head strike movements at 12 p.m. At 5 p.m. he continues with the three big exercises, bench press, squats, and deadlifts, doing 10 repetitions per set for 10 sets. To keep this routine for the next 14 days, he even decides to resign from his job. You might be wondering why he is doing this. Has he suddenly gone mad? Being called mad would be better than what he saw, an interface warning that the door to the end of days is opening soon. He follows the system's recommendations. What would you do if you were him? Regardless, he believes it, that the world is about to end. Time ticks by, second by second, and finally. Let's go back 15 days to understand what really happened. A notification was sent to everyone on that day, causing phones to ring simultaneously. It was a disaster warning message. Monsters had appeared around the mountains. Initially, many doubted it and thought it was a prank, but the messages kept coming, causing panic. Amid the chaos, a live streaming video accidentally captured a monster. Many thought it was just a bodybuilder in a costume, but that wasn't the case. A young man who saw the video was shocked, removing his headset in disbelief. Why did the video look so realistic? This man is Lee Ho Young, our main character, a 29-year-old who was annoyed by the recent events. Fake videos were causing more chaos. Yes, at first, he didn't believe in monsters until his face turned pale when he saw a female monster trapped. Feeling disbelief and a bit of fear, he wanted to run away, but the monster was pleading for help. Ho Young could see that the monster wanted his help. Even though she tried to act cute and ask for help, it was still scary. The monster cried, but Ho Young knew he wasn't kind enough to feel pity for a monster. He closed his eyes, even though the monster looked at him with those hopeful eyes. He couldn't help the monster, but then, the monster showed a photo of its family, with its parents, as if saying it also had a family at home. Wiping its tears, the monster seemed to want to return to its family. Ho Young was speechless, but ultimately decided to help the monster, receiving a reward in return. The monster gave him a small, round object called the Silver Goblin's Pill, a consumable item with unknown effects. It was the first time he had seen a strange, untouchable interface that appeared like a hologram. Despite having a pill that promised something mysterious, he was hesitant to consume anything so suspicious. Meanwhile, breaking news on national TV delivered urgent reports about unidentified large structures appearing worldwide. These buildings, resembling towers, disrupted communication signals. Even more terrifying, monsters began emerging from these towers. Was the apocalypse really beginning? Ho Young pondered the news deeply, only to be jolted by a massive explosion across from his apartment. People ran for their lives, many paralyzed with shock. From the explosion's epicenter, an enormous tower suddenly appeared in the city, just like the ones in the news. This was the first time such a colossal tower had appeared in Korea. Ho Young couldn't deny it anymore. He saw it with his own eyes. It was all too real. Clenching his fists, he seemed determined. He didn't know if this was the right choice, but it was the only time he could do something this crazy. He swallowed the goblin's pill, causing his body to glow with his veins becoming visible on his skin. Veins around his eyes also emerged and suddenly his pupils began to shine a bright blue. A series of notifications appeared, informing him that he had acquired the sage's status window. This power provided a guide with the highest chances of survival in the current situation. Holographic puzzle pieces assembled before his eyes, forming something new. The merged holographic puzzle transformed into an object resembling a book, but with the difference that he could physically hold it. When he opened the book, he was astonished as it emitted a blinding light. After reading its contents, a system window notification appeared as a guide. The guide revealed that in 15 days, the door to the end of days would open. This is how he started following the guide's recommendations. He discarded everything else for 15 days to focus solely on training. And finally, the door to the end opened. He found himself in a vast, wild forest. Is this the end? It was quite different from what Ho Young had imagined, and a blunt sword suddenly appeared beside him. System notifications flooded in, telling him the game was starting now. Starting tutorial. Talent test completed. Ho Young would be assigned the most suitable class based on the data analysis. And Lee Ho Young's class was Combat Swordsman. 
The system window suggested opening the status for more details, but there was too much to read. In short, Lee Ho Young, with the combat swordsman class at level 1, had basic swordsmanship skills at level 1 and Sage's status window. The status point distribution was like this. Anyway, to complete the tutorial, there were two ways. First, to survive in the forest for 60 minutes, and second, to find the way out and escape. When he read the quest, the Sage's status window appeared, providing a guide with the highest probability of survival. According to the guide, Ho Young was advised to use the first method and kill as many monsters as possible. The second option would hinder his growth and was not recommended. He realized he could use the Sage's status window here, and it seemed the system knew this situation would happen, asking him to train accordingly. Finally, the tutorial began. A horned monster emerged from the bushes. At first glance, it was just a regular raccoon with a horn. Is that a monster? It was cuter than he thought. However, the raccoon's pretty face turned menacing, muscles bulging, its body becoming buff. The horned raccoon monster leapt to attack, but it only took one sword slash to kill it. After killing the one-horned raccoon, Ho Young gained EXP. He realized how weak the monsters here were, easily destroyed by basic swordsmanship, probably because they were tutorial monsters. He noted that using basic swordsmanship cost 2 MP, and he only had 10 MP, so he could only use the skill five times. This meant he had to kill monsters efficiently while conserving MP during his hunt, but it was easier than he thought, killing the one-horned raccoon with one slash. Gaining lots of EXP made him level up to two. When leveling up, HP and MP were restored. Each level up granted two points that could be used to increase stats. He was relieved and leveled up just in time when his MP was almost depleted. Then, something strange happened. The red light from the Sage's status window looked odd. The system window seemed to glitch. A notification appeared, stating that the status window adjusted to the player's level, and Lee Ho Young returned to level 1 again. Another notification titled, The Weight of Knowledge appeared, indicating that his level would increase more slowly because he had the Sage's status window than other players. Naturally, he was shocked. Why was there a penalty for having the Sage's status window? How could the hard-earned level be taken away? What a huge loss! When he opened the status window, he was astonished. Lee Ho Young was still level 1, but something was strange. The points he gained from leveling up were not lost. If what he thought was true, this was not a penalty, but a bug. This would be a bug-like powerful ability. While engrossed in examining the status window, a raccoon monster suddenly appeared to attack. With a firm and quick slash, it was easy for Ho Young to kill the raccoon. He gained a lot of EXP from killing the raccoon and leveled up to level 2. But the bug adjusted his level and brought him back to level 1. Lee Ho Young was very pleased, as it was exactly as he had expected. He would go back to level 1. But the points Ho Young had gained from leveling up were not lost, and now he had 4 points to use. By the way, isn't leveling up from level 1 faster than from a higher level? If so, this is super OP, right? Okay, back to the story. Since Ho Young had several points, he planned to increase his stats. There were four options. Stamina, Agility, Strength, and Sensitivity. Strength and Agility are the best choices for a combat swordsman. Strength would make attacks heavier and stronger, and Agility would increase speed and reflexes. Based on this thought, he knew what stats he needed most right now. Sensitivity. He used all his points to improve that stat. Some time passed, and his hunt was going smoothly without obstacles. Now it was very easy for him to kill the raccoon monsters, but they were not as strong as he had imagined. Ho Young could even defeat them with his default stats. With the guide leading him, a question arose. How many one-horned raccoons could he find in the given time? Ho Young was now much stronger with 20 sensitivity stat points. He found it easier to locate raccoon monsters, as if he could sense some sort of chi with 20 sensitivity points. His smile vanished when he felt a terrifying aura. The status window appeared with a notification that Ho Young had defeated all the monsters and triggered a hidden quest. A one-horned raccoon, unlike any other, surrounded by a bloodthirsty red aura and larger than usual, appeared. The monster was named One-Horned Raccoon Alpha at level 2. Sage's status window suggested Ho Young kill the monster. With its large muscles, the big raccoon monster could quickly leap to attack. Ho Young, with his high sensitivity, managed to dodge the dangerous attacks, rolling on the ground to maintain distance as the monster's movements were faster. The one-horned raccoon alpha was different from regular one-horned raccoons. 
Was it the boss? Ho Young was very alert and ready. The big raccoon monster attacked again using its horn, but Ho Young was already prepared. Mentally and physically, he was ready, unlike before, and with a single horizontal slash, he cut down the monster. Then, a notification appeared, telling him he had defeated the boss, One-Horned Raccoon Alpha. Because he had completed the hidden quest, there was an additional reward of gold. Even though the boss monster was strong, he is actually level 7 after all. After that, the tutorial was over. Ho Young did not expect one hour to feel so long. However, the surprises did not end. Initially in the forest, he was in a strange room with many people when he opened his eyes. The room had a weird red light in the center of the ceiling. Suddenly, a speaker in the room emitted a voice, welcoming everyone who had completed the tutorial. The voice said that this room was the lobby of the tower. They were currently in region C2567. Ho Young struggled to comprehend the meaning and explanation of the voice. What exactly was meant by the lobby? He glanced around, seeing 14 men and 11 women in the room, and it seemed they all had completed the tutorial and been sent here. What he could understand now was the situation was panic. Everyone was panicking for a reason, but that made sense because the world had changed in just one day. He would surely panic like the others if he hadn't known the world was ending beforehand. He had to stay calm in this situation to get out of here. In the other corner of the room, a beautiful blonde woman was wondering where they were, and her question was answered by a rabbit-like creature, saying they were now in the Tower of the End. The creature introduced itself as Kum Kum, level 55, the cute manager of the tower's lower floors. Panic still filled the room. Those already confused about their location now had to see a strange creature that suddenly appeared. Only one person remained much calmer, our MC. He asked Kum Kum if this was the world's end and what they should do now. Kum Kum praised Ho Young for the good question. The monster explained that all 24 players here would participate in a game with their lives at stake. Kum Kum's face, which initially was cute, now looked terrifying, cunning, and dangerous. All the players in the lobby panicked. Their lives were at stake in the tower's silly game. Kum Kum explained that all humans on Earth were currently inside this tower. The players would work together on each mission on each floor to climb the tower. Ho Young quickly grasped the situation, but could they return to normal life if they managed to reach the top of the tower? But Kum Kum didn't know for sure, an answer that made everyone lose hope. If the floor manager didn't know, what was the point of climbing the tower now? But nonchalantly, the damned rabbit manager said that only death awaited those who didn't climb the tower. Turning back with a frightening look, Kum Kum forgot to mention one thing. Many people had already died in the tutorial. Hearing that, Ho Young could no longer maintain his composure. He knew it was just a tutorial, but many people couldn't complete it. Then he thought about something. The elderly and children must have also been dragged in and likely failed. Having said everything, Kum Kum asked all the players if anyone would try killing him. He had to die to go home, and there was a special reward for those who helped him. Many questions popped into Ho Young's mind. What was it? Was it a trap? Kum Kum didn't look strong from the outside, but he doubted he could defeat someone level 55. He felt he should remain silent and watch for now, but the guide from Sage's status window appeared. The guide told Ho Young to help the low-level floor manager Kum Kum go home. His mind was filled with speculation. Had the system gone crazy? Help him go home. But did that mean it was okay to attack the rabbit? Ho Young had never been hurt while listening to what the guide said, but was it worth doing something so conspicuous? Then a man stepped forward, willing to do it. If the little rabbit wanted to die, he just had to kill it. The man's face looked very angry as he drew the sword from his back. He raised his sword without hesitation and targeted Kum Kum. The rabbit manager's expression changed and the worst happened. The man who was supposed to attack was hit by a barehanded blow from Kum Kum, who suddenly became muscular and strong. Blood splattered everywhere, leaving everyone stunned. The beautiful blonde woman's eyes were blank as she watched the blood splatter past her. The now giant Kum Kum said, Oops, I accidentally counterattacked. The behavior and words of the floor manager worsened the atmosphere, with panic, hopelessness, and fear evident on everyone's faces. The killing occurred after a single blow witnessed by all. Ho Young, initially optimistic about helping Kum Kum go home, stood frozen. His face was pale, and he did not know what to do. He imagined what if the person hit was him. 
The guide suggested helping him go home, but Kum Kum was so frightening, and the question arose, was the guide lying now? Ho Young was speechless. His suspicion that the guide was lying surfaced more strongly. Then his pupils suddenly emitted light, turning golden. Unknowingly, he had triggered Sage's status window to unlock another inherent skill, Sage's Eye. The user could see other people's status windows with Sage's Eye. Ho Young didn't expect another ability besides the guide, and the reason for its activation was still mysterious. When he looked at Kum Kum, Ho Young could see its status window. He smiled slightly, then raised his hand as a sign he was willing. Ho Young would help Kum Kum go home. With the help of Sage's eye, he realized that the guide was not lying. Why? We will find out soon. Kum Kum observed the player willing to help him go home, with a hint of disdain on his face because Ho Young was still level 1. Regardless of the player's level, Kum Kum prepared for a fight. Before that could happen, the blonde woman tried to stop Ho Young. Other players also wanted to warn him not to act recklessly, but Ho Young already had a plan, and he was confident in it. He even felt confident that he would present something interesting. Once again, Kum Kum, who was cute, transformed into a muscular and terrifying rabbit. The lower floor manager leapt to attack quickly and mercilessly. Despite being reassured by Sage's status window, Ho Young was still nervous about facing Kum Kum. However, he realized something strange about what Kum Kum said. Ho Young was sure were 25 people in the room, 14 men and 11 women. But why did Kum Kum say there were 24 players in the room? Was it just a common mistake? Ho Young didn't think so. Given the horror of facing a level 55 monster and the fear that it could kill them, he speculated that it was all intentional. Kum Kum's attack was swift. The barehanded punch hit Ho Young's head, but strangely, no blood flowed. Ho Young still held his sword tightly while approaching. Then a red sword trajectory appeared on Kum Kum's body. You must be wondering why Kum Kum mentioned the wrong number, right? The reason is simple. From the beginning, there were only 24 people in the room. Ho Young's vertical slash easily split the rabbit monster's body in two. The person Kum Kum hit to death was just a hologram he created. Kum Kum's status window was also strange. All his stats were zero, and what the players saw was not Kum Kum's real body, but a hologram. The body would disappear when it took damage. Sure enough, the lower floor manager's body disappeared instantly, and that was the interesting show Ho Young promised. A small round object appeared from Kum Kum's disappearing body like the previous silver pill. The pill could raise one stat point if used. Since it was his right, Ho Young took it. But before that, he got a question from one of the players about how he knew Kum Kum was just a hologram. Ho Young didn't want to tell the truth. He reasoned that the blood from the person earlier had passed the blonde woman, and her face and clothes should have been covered in blood from the explosion. That's why he thought it was all just a show. Yes, that's his reason. Then came a muscular red-haired man named Kim Seong. He was upset because he should have gotten the pill. Do you know the type of a thug-looking guy who is weak and loves to brag? Yes, that's Kim Seong. While Ho Young avoided people like him, he quickly crushed the pill in his hand to activate the effect of adding one stat point, which made Seong angry. He warned Ho Young for his disrespectful act with a fierce and intimidating face. From experience, the wisest thing is to avoid people like Kim Seong, but Ho Young needs to know how long he can hold it. Well, anything could happen. Then the speaker in the lobby room announced something again. The announcement went something like this. From now on, your starting gold will be given out. You can use the gold in the shop, and additional gold will be given according to the number of monsters you have hunted in the tutorial. In this area, a player's highest amount of starting gold is 7,400 gold. That amount of gold was a lot, so it's no wonder the players were excited to hear the announcement. Compared to the thug guy, who only got 1,300 gold, and Kim Jun Song, who only got 1,500 gold. The player with the highest starting gold, 7,400 gold, was Lee Ho Young. He could kill all the monsters, even the hidden boss. Of course, he didn't plan to reveal it because someone was jealous because of one stat point. Then the shop menu opened. Three major things could be done with gold. Buying items, upgrading skill levels, or increasing stats. Increasing one stat cost 100 gold. In short, Ho Young increased his stats by strength by 9 points, stamina by 6 points, and agility by 13 points. Investing in stats upgrades made all his stats even out at 20, with 4,600 gold remaining. 
Prompted by the red-haired thug complaining about the high cost of upgrading skills, Ho Young also invested in upgrading his basic swordsmanship skill to level 2, costing 1,500 gold. For the final touch, he bought some fresher clothes. He couldn't keep wearing his gym uniform. After finishing his preparations, a beautiful blonde woman named Che Yiseol approached him for advice. It was reasonable for Ho Young to wonder why Yiseol would ask a level 1 player. Still, she was very impressed by his bravery. Ho Young could also see Che Yiseol's status window. She was in the level 3 healer class with average stats but decent sensitivity. Oh, and Ho Young could also see the gold of other players. He tested Che Yiseol's honesty by asking about her gold, but she was truthful and seemed to have no ill intentions. Therefore, Ho Young was willing to give her advice. Out of formality, he asked if Che Yiseol liked to exercise. Since basic stats reflect real-life habits, Che Yiseol disliked exercise, which explained her low stamina stats. Ho Young advised Miss Che to invest a bit in her lacking stamina. After giving Miss Che his advice, the lobby speaker's voice sounded again, announcing that the first floor mission would soon begin. Players were expected to form parties of three, and those without a party would be randomly assigned. They had 30 minutes to do so. Ho Young anticipated such a mission but didn't expect it to come so soon. Amid the confusion, player Kim Jun Song suggested that everyone reveal their classes to make party formation easier. As he suggested, players began disclosing their classes and forming teams with those they preferred. Ho Young's first member was Miss Che Yi Sol. He had no reason to refuse a healer in his party. However, other players avoided forming parties with Ho Young, given his level 1 status. Meanwhile, level 4 players were much more relaxed, easily forming their parties. Some players who hadn't formed parties would be randomly assigned, and Ho Young was keen to avoid the red-haired thug. As the 30 minutes passed, the first floor mission began, and they were transported to a mountain area full of trees. The player Ho Young had tried to avoid ending up in his party. Ho Young's luck was bad. He hadn't expected the thug to be so unpopular despite his level. Initially, Ho Young hesitated to cooperate, but given the situation, he had to make it work. He had to cooperate to survive here. They were teleported to the next battle location as soon as the mission began. From atop a hill, they saw a strange village. Their mission this time was to eliminate the kobold tribe within 12 hours. As usual, Kim Seong spoke harshly to our MC with his typical arrogant attitude. While showing off his muscles, he ordered Ho Young not to interfere with his performance. He generously allowed his two subordinates, or at least that's what his empty head thought, to take cover behind him. Reluctant to argue, Lee Ho Young decided to go along with Seong's wishes, at least for now. Of course, you all know that this loudmouth thug couldn't possibly lead the team well, right? Che Yi Sol, the only woman in the team, winced. She wasn't sure if this team could work together well. The three of them walked through the forest, which felt very foreign. Ho Young immediately noticed the many insects in the forest. He also observed strange fruits hanging from the trees. They looked like apples, but amusingly glowed purple. He needed to find out if these fruits were edible. Diverting his attention from the funny fruit, Yissel called him softly. The blonde woman seemed quite anxious about the kobold monsters they would face. Calmly, Li Ho Young reassured her that they could fight the kobolds, considering they were still on level one of the tower. Nevertheless, he still reminded everyone not to let their guard down and not to underestimate their journey. Yeah, but sometimes we feel confident just to cheer ourselves up, right? Reality is not always as beautiful as expectations. As soon as they saw one of the kobolds before them, Lee Ho Young's jaw nearly dropped. With its muscular build standing on two legs with eight pack abs that even we might not have, the kobold casually wielded a club. Damn, its appearance differed vastly from the cute raccoon monsters they faced during the trial. Seriously, can the difficulty increase that drastically? Yisul and Ho Young cautiously hid behind the bushes. They realized they couldn't move recklessly and had to stay aware of their surroundings, worried that other kobold monsters might be nearby. But of course, in his foolishness, Kim Seong arrogantly stepped out of the bushes, mocking his two teammates as cowards who hide like children. He immediately jumped towards the kobold monster and threw a powerful punch at its face. Even Yi Sol and Ho Young were left gaping, speechless at the reckless actions of the red-haired thug. Ho Young had a bad feeling. But in contrast, Seong grinned widely, his face showing delight at his perceived victory in a single strike. 
Clearly, Ho Young's intuition was better. The kobold wasn't hurt at all. Its eyes glowed with anger towards Seyong. As a result, a fist fight ensued between the angry kobold and the naive red thug. Lee Ho Young was utterly speechless, not expecting Seyong to be so brainless and reckless. Reluctantly, Yi Sol joined the fight. Did she participate in the punching? Of course not. The woman did her job as a healer. Ho Young scanned the surroundings for other kobolds and watched his two teammates fighting. The scene was utterly chaotic, one person wildly punching, the other panicking and healing who knows who. Even so, Ho Young was quite impressed with Seyong's punching power. He could understand why that braggart had reached level 4 from his attacks alone. Plus, with Yisol constantly providing mana and healing him, Seyong should be able to take down the kobold on his own quickly. Strangely, that was not what happened. Ho Young frowned, noticing that the damage the kobold took was too low and didn't make sense. Reluctantly, Ho Young opened the tower guide, finding the explanation that kobold monsters are passive types, remaining in defensive mode unless provoked first. That means Seyong was foolishly stirring up a hornet's nest. Ho Young tried to stay positive, scrolling down the tower guide window and searching for other information, at least one weakness of the monster that could help them. Gotcha! His eyes widened as he found the info he needed. Meanwhile, Seyong began to feel frustrated with the kobold monster that refused to fall. He gritted his teeth and clenched his fists tightly, focusing every muscle in his punch for what he believed to be a finishing move. A loud thud echoed through the forest from Seyong's punch. The attack was much stronger than before. The kobold should have been injured if it hit directly. Unfortunately, the dog-like monster skillfully dodged to the side. Instead of hitting the target, Seyong's punch destroyed a giant tree in front of him. And oh no! Worse still, the tree fell right on another kobold's head. Not only did he miss his target, but the monster that turned angrily towards Seyong was level 6. Great! One problem wasn't enough. Now, a stronger and angrier one appeared. That's the consequence of your recklessness, Seyong. Now, he had no choice but to fight two monsters. Seyong was in a panic, almost exhausted, his pupils darting around wildly, searching for Ho Young, hoping for help. But he couldn't find the blue-haired man, and assumed his teammate had fled. In that split second of distraction, one of the kobolds swiftly raised its giant hammer, ready to crush Seyong mercilessly. Luckily, Yisol was skillful and quick enough to save him by slashing the kobold's back, although not deeply. Unfortunately, the girl tripped over a rock and fell hard due to her poor agility. She panicked, fully aware of the threat to her life. A shadow darted towards the blonde girl, displaying its foul-smelling fangs. The kobold monster was intent on finishing Yisol off in one blow. Just before the kobold attacked, something purple was seen flying towards the monster from a distance. Remember the strange apple Ho Young observed earlier? That object split open, spraying thick purple liquid as it was sliced by a sword. Whose sword? Ho Young's, of course. The sword continued to slash at the kobold's neck, saving Yisol's life. At first, the slash seemed to mean nothing. But suddenly, the wound from Ho Young's sword started to look strange, like a burn that blistered and festered. Shortly after, the kobold monster reacted weirdly, screaming in pain, and boom! The beast exploded like a time bomb. Yisul and Seyong froze for a moment, seeing the kobold eliminated and lying dead, powerless. The two teammates simultaneously shouted Ho Young's name in shock. Of course, with a confident smile, Ho Young felt satisfied with his sharp observation. Besides being oddly purple, he noticed insects wouldn't touch that fruit at all. He pulled out the fruit from his inventory. It turned out to be a poisonous apple. Fortunately, he had read from the tower guide that kobolds are highly vulnerable to poison. Knowing the key to victory from level 1 of the tower was the fruit he held, Ho Young couldn't help but grin widely. Seyong gritted his teeth in frustration, and without any sense of shame, he yelled at Ho Young loudly, the veins in his neck bulging with anger. The red-haired man wildly pointed at our MC, accusing Ho Young of deliberately using a sneaky trick, hiding when things got dangerous and coming out when the monster was weak to steal the critical hit that should have been his. Well, a braggart is always a braggart, isn't that right? With a blank and incredulous expression, Ho Young was utterly baffled by the nonsense thrown at him. Even when Seyong stomped off with heavy steps, or rather in the throes of a tantrum, Ho Young just watched, shaking his head in disbelief. When they arrived at the kobold village, Seyong's behavior did not change. Naively, he tried to take down the kobolds with wild punches. At the same time, Ho Young and Yisol danced behind him, gleefully brandishing poison-coated swords. 
Frustrated and angry, Seong even stopped using his fists. Literally, he used his blunt head to fight, to no avail. Despite his comrades easily killing kobolds with little effort, laughing as if playing house, Seong continued his struggle. Seong screamed in anger and cursed wildly, glancing enviously at his companions, not understanding how they could kill kobolds so effortlessly. He even started crying after taking a hard hit to the head from a kobold's hammer. The large man fell, exhausted and beyond frustrated. He sobbed, letting the kobolds trample over him, pleading for help from anyone. His body ached, as did his pride, but he no longer cared. Amid his pathetic despair, the kobold's attack suddenly stopped. Seong glanced up fearfully. A deep slash was visible on the dog-like monster, and they exploded simultaneously. Seong looked up seeing Ho Young standing heroically before him, bathed in the gentle afternoon sunlight. Ho Young shone brilliantly in Se Young's eyes, and he extended a hand to him. Seeing the man who saved him smile at him, Se Young couldn't help but pull a goofy face. He grinned widely, with tears and snot still flowing, starkly contrasting his muscular body. Now he looked like a true muscle-bound fool, you know, like the type of gangster who would do anything for the boss who saved his life in battle. That was the end of the naive man who was no longer naive. Would he no longer be a problem for Ho Young, or would new issues arise because of his newfound respect? With Seong now deeply respectful towards Ho Young, that marked the end of their level 1 mission. After successfully conquering the kobold village, the three of them returned to the lobby through a portal. Yasol noticed the lobby was still very empty. It seemed they were the first team to complete the mission. Plus, each of them had now leveled up. Humbly, Ho Young felt grateful for their luck in quickly finding the kobold's weakness. Yisol vehemently disagreed, realizing it was not luck that saved them, but Ho Young's excellent skill and observation. Ho Young responded with a stiff career laugh. Before long, a glimmer of blue light shone from the corner of Ho Young's eye. One by one, other teams began entering the lobby. Yi Sol smiled with relief, seeing their comrades return alive. At the same time, Ho Young felt a bit anxious inside, wondering if everyone would return on time, and, of course, intact. Once again, his worry became a reality. Ho Young might have a knack for being a fortune teller, albeit a bearer of bad news. The other team that came through the portal was in poor condition. They were severely injured and had lost one member. As a healer, Yi Sol's body moved automatically rushing to the wounded members and frantically asking about the missing person. Unable to hold back her tears, a wounded woman in a blue hat cried uncontrollably. Even when she recalled how her teammate lost their life to the kobold monster, she couldn't tell the full story, but her streaming tears were enough for everyone to understand. Before their sorrow could dissipate, their emotions were again shaken by a robotic voice announcing that all teams had returned and completed the mission. Inevitably, the room became a buzz. That meant not all teams had returned safely. Ho Young's guess was right, and he frowned in distress. Eight people had perished on the first mission. He hadn't expected so many lives to be eliminated so quickly. His heart trembled at the thought of the future. Every floor they would climb, how many more lives would be lost. He even doubted whether everyone would survive to reach the tower's highest peak. As in the previous trial, they were rewarded with gold coins each time they completed a floor. Ho Young received 2,000 gold as a performance bonus. He decided to save as much as possible, realizing the amount given was less than when they completed the tutorial. While he was preoccupied with his thoughts, a voice piped up, curious about which team finished the first floor mission first. Ho Young was momentarily surprised. He glanced around cautiously, weighing whether to speak up or wisely remain silent and let only the second team know. Before he could admit it, the red-headed fool loudly boasted that their team was the first. Look at that ridiculous smug face, it's truly reckless. His statement shocked everyone. They couldn't believe the outcast squad would be the first. The reaction was quite negative, especially since Ho Young, just a level two, received benefits from being on the first team to complete the mission. He was viewed with disdain. They all thought Ho Young was a freeloader who did nothing for the team. In the heated situation, Ho Young could only manage a bitter smile in silence. Despite Yi Sol's efforts to defend him, Ho Young didn't care. He held her back to prevent her from making any clarifications. He knew that any defense would only be considered empty talk. For now, it was wiser for them to remain silent and prove themselves through actions. 
Fortunately, Kim jun Seong, the charismatic highest level player, calmed the atmosphere. He asked everyone to stay focused on their survival mission. This was followed by enthusiastic agreement from Seo Jun-ho, a young man who appeared optimistic and strong. These high-level survivors' statements ignited a spark of hope in everyone's hearts. However, once again it lasted only a short time. The bluish burning torches suddenly turned red flames, making the entire room an inferno. A deafening sound rang out as a warning of danger. Ho Young widened her eyes in surprise, as did all the other people in the lobby. Apparently, they suddenly received a mission penalty due to the number of survivors in C-2567 being below the average. As a result, they had to receive a death penalty. Upon hearing the word death, everyone panicked and became anxious at the same time. As a penalty, all players were asked to vote for one player who would undertake the death penalty mission within five minutes. They were given time to discuss and decide. The atmosphere in the room changed drastically from optimistic to so heavy and depressive. They were busy glancing here and there, between having to choose someone or listening to their conscience not to sacrifice anyone. The palpable panic was clearly there. With the seconds ticking by and hearts beating louder than church bells, the blood of all players rose to their heads, every beat of sweat showing clear anxiety. Yisol tried to provide a solution in a hurry suggesting that they all vote for themselves so that no one would receive the penalty, but was immediately refuted with a reasonable fear that they all would actually get the death penalty. This unfortunate situation clearly disadvantaged Ho Young. Branded as a freeloader in the team and subjected to scorn earlier, he was now an easy target. Time was running out, and someone deliberately pointed at Ho Young. With that bold move, almost everyone else followed suit, voting for Ho Young in desperation, and hiding behind the excuse of, what can we do, a pitiful example of human nature. Adding insult to injury, he was the only player with the lowest level there, as if sacrificing the weakest was the right and wise decision. Despite Yisil's attempts to defend Ho Young, everyone closed their eyes and ears, burying their consciences deep down. Even Se Yong, the red-haired scoundrel, voted for him despite Ho Young having saved his life earlier. This was where the mask of human kindness fell. Ho Young didn't try to defend himself. Facing a slowly opening red portal before him, whether it led to death or hell, he didn't care. With a cold expression, he realized that everyone who saw him might feel guilty or relieved. He felt utterly disgusted and walked towards the portal like a sacrificial lamb on an altar. Nevertheless, his steps paused briefly before the portal. The guidance window opened, informing him he had a high chance of completing this mission with a harsh snort. Ho Young entered the portal with light steps and a wide grin, knowing that a worthy reward awaited him if he successfully completed the death penalty. What will happen next in Ho Young's story? How terrifying is the mission he will face? How will he overcome it? And what extraordinary reward will he receive? Stay tuned for the thrilling continuation of Ho Young's tale. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I really appreciate it. See you in the next video. Bye.